I'm Katie. Hello, I'm Judith. Hi, I'm Conrad, and this is Helping Hand. Helping Hand is a cross-platform mobile app that we've created which aims to pair up vulnerable or elderly people who can't or would otherwise struggle to leave the house with volunteers who are able to do their shopping for them and drop it off. The idea came about in light of the current coronavirus lockdown and we've taken it from idea to working app in about two weeks. I'm now going to be talking briefly about our planning and development process. The first step to our planning process was to come up with a set of user stories for both the volunteer and the vulnerable person so that we had a really good outline of what functionality we wanted the app to have. Then before moving on to coding, we used Adobe XD to produce a very rough wireframe of the app and used the prototyping feature to help us figure out the user journey through the app, which gave us a really good base when it came to coding as we knew exactly where everything was going to go and the type of experience that the user was going to have. So I'm now just going to move straight on to a demo of the app. I'm now going to show the demo of Helping Hand on an Android device from the perspective of someone who needs help with their shopping, in this case, Mr. Wilson. So I'm going to go get started and get him registered by clicking Help Me With My Shopping. And I'm just going to quickly whiz through this registration form. We need to also ensure that it's a valid postcode. And there's also a disclaimer at the bottom here because we need to share the name and approximate location with all potential volunteers in the area so that the volunteers are able to specify a radius and the user's phone number and exact address will be shared but only with the person who decides to help them and this must be ticked in order for you to register so i'm going to go ahead and do that we're now going to log back in as mr wilson he doesn't currently have a shopping list so there's an option to take a photo or choose from the gallery I'm going to show you that the camera functionality we have is a working camera. So this is the point where there would be a shopping list and you would just grab and take a photo. At present this is just on an emulator so I'm not able to show you the actual camera view. So for the purposes of this demonstration I'm going to choose a photo from the gallery. We can also crop this image here if we want to so that it's a bit easier to see and add your image uploads the image when we click see my shopping list this takes us back to the overall dashboard which shows the status of pending and today's date when we sent in the request and that it's currently waiting to be picked up i'm now going to take you over to Udit, who's going to show the app from the perspective of the volunteer Helping Hand works both on Android and iOS devices, so I will be using an iOS simulator to show you the app from a volunteer side. I'm going to click I'm here to help. Our volunteer will be Dennis, who can help Mr. Wilson with his shopping list, so I'm just going to register him quickly. On the slider, the volunteer can set the size of the area where they want to help out, which by default is at 5 miles, I will set it to 7 miles. I'm just clicking register now. If the user forgets to fill out a field, the app will not let them register and show a little message. So I'm just going to enter a phone number as well. And click register again. After registration, the user is taken to the login screen where they can now log in. Here, the volunteer will see a list of all the neighbours within the given area who need help with their shopping. We have Mr. Wilson at the bottom, so I'm going to click on him to see more details. We can now see the option to pick up his shopping list, the shopping list itself, and also Mr. Wilson's approximate location, which we can also open on our Google Maps. 
It's important that at this stage we are not giving out Mr. Wilson's address yet, only an approximate location. I will now scroll back up and click I can help. Since Dennis is now committed to, his, to the shopping list, he is able to see Mr. Wilson's exact address and also has access to call his number to arrange delivery once the shopping is completed. Now heading back over to Mr. Wilson, when he logs back in sometime later, we will be taken back to the dashboard where we can now see that the status has changed to accepted. We can see that our volunteer is called Dennis and he's currently helping us with our shopping. If we want to check on the status of the order for any reason, we can just click to call Dennis down here and that'll take us to call him directly on the number he's provided. So let's head back over to Dennis and watch him complete the order. After completing Mr. Wilson's shopping and arranging safe delivery, Dennis can now mark the shopping as delivered. This will also show up on Mr. Wilson's shopping list dashboard, where he also needs to confirm that the shopping was indeed received before the shopping list gets marked as fully completed in the system. The volunteer is then taken back to the list of other neighbours who need help with their shopping. Thank you for watching our Helping Hand demo, we hope you liked it as much as we do. Now I'm going to talk about our tech stack. Apart from Express and Node.js, all other technologies that we ended up using were 100% new to us, none of which we learned about um, throughout the course, so it was quite a nice challenge uh, to pick up on within the two weeks time frame that we had to learn these technologies and actually build our app. On the backend, we built an Express API server with GraphQL, which was a good alternative to REST endpoints for handling HTTP requests. For our database, we used MongoDB with Mongoose. We chose GraphQL and MongoDB because we were quite keen to learn them both, given their popularity and because they were quite um, different from what we learned in the course, which was SQL with Postgres. We also used BigQuery to hashing passwords and also for basic authentication for when our users log in. We used three different Google APIs, two at the back and one at the front. The backend ones were um, geolocation to get the coordinates of each user based on their postcode. And we also used distance matrix, um, the distance matrix API to filter the shopping list based on the volunteer's location and the given distance they were willing to travel. On the front end, we used Flutter, which is um, a framework by Google and it's written in Dart. So first we had to learn a new programming language, which was Dart to be able to then pick up Flutter. The third Google API that we used in the front end was Google Maps, which was to display the approximate location of our users in an in-app map. For the image storage, we used Firebase, um, where we sent off the actual image from the front end and then linked the image URL to the user documents in our MongoDB database. We deployed the backend on Heroku and for version control, we used GitHub. Now I'm going to pass you over to Kunrad, who will um, go into more details about the backend technologies and why we chose them. In terms of our backend tech stack, we went with MongoDB for our data storage as non-relational databases along with MongoDB itself was something that we hadn't tried before and we were eager to explore. We also used the Mongoose framework to work with MongoDB within JavaScript. As it turns out, our data lends itself pretty well to non-relational databases, although it would work fine on a relational one as well. One nice benefit of using MongoDB is that the data is stored and returned essentially as a JSON object, which made it quite easy to work with, as well as pairing nicely with GraphQL, which we used to build our API. We chose GraphQL for the API because, again, it was something that we'd never tried before, and we decided quite early on that we wanted to explore a lot of new technology with this project. One thing that drew us to GraphQL is the ability to specify exactly what you want out of a request, as well as exactly what you want to put in. This meant that we could cut down on both data transmitted per request as well as the number of requests overall. On top of this, it streamlined development in general because at every point we knew exactly what results we were going to get back from the API request. Uh, so we didn't have to worry about sorting out the data that we needed from the extra data that might have come from a more rigid request structure. Another thing that was a nice bonus from using GraphQL is that it comes with a built-in user interface called Graphical which provides like a sandbox environment for rapidly testing and iterating on API queries without the need for any extra software. This made developing the API a lot quicker and easier. 
for the map and location functionality, we went with Google Maps via Google's cloud platform, mostly because of the large suite of APIs the platform offered. Um, everything that we needed was provided by these different APIs that were all working in the same ecosystem and they were all designed to work seamlessly with each other. So it seemed like the logical choice. For example, when a user is created, uh, a request is sent to the geocoding API with the user's address and the location data returned from that is already in the right format to just send straight to the distance matrix API, which is used to get the distance between multiple user locations for filtering purposes. Finally, we went with Heroku to host the backend. Um, this was one place that we did kind of play it safe as we already knew that Heroku was a reliable and affordable hosting platform that fit our needs and would do exactly what we needed to do. And now I'll pass you back to Katie who will go into a little bit about the front end tech that we used. Great, I'm now going to talk to you about the tech on our front end. I think we knew from quite early on that we wanted to develop a mobile app. Our project lends itself well to being a mobile app and we also wanted it to be device agnostic. So we started looking into technologies which fit this bill. We came across Dart and Flutter, which can be used to develop apps for both iOS and Android. It was great to use Flutter and Dart because it gave us a chance to explore an object-oriented programming paradigm, as opposed to having most recently used React on our course, which is based on functional programming. Flutter is also a Google product, and hence we chose to use a Google suite of products, as they have excellent integration with each other and are, in theory, easier to set up. As you saw earlier, we use Google Maps on our front end, and we also use Google Firebase Cloud Storage for our shopping list images. We use Flutter GraphQL plugin, which allowed interaction between our front end and our backend GraphQL endpoint. I think it's fair to say we had a few challenges with this, which we'll explore in more detail later on. I'm now going to pass you over to Comrade, who is going to talk about the agile practices we use throughout our project phase. From the beginning, we went into this following agile development practices. Um, we had a Trello board that we kept updated consistently throughout the day. Uh, this was especially helpful for us as we were working completely remotely, but we could still see it updating in real time as we ticked off things that we'd done, uh, moved tasks into different states of completion and so on. Uh, doing this meant that everyone always had a handle on what was going on uh, as it was happening, so we were always up to date with each other. We also had multiple stand-ups a day, usually three, sometimes more. We used the Discord server provided by North Coders for this, uh, as it's a super easy platform to just drop in and out of, and it worked really well for what we wanted to do. Having these stand-ups meant that everyone was consistently kept up to date on what everyone else was doing at that point in the day, along with any challenges that people might be facing. And this was great because uh, sharing the challenges that we'd run up against with each other gave opportunity for each of us to offer help where it might not have been immediately obvious that someone was struggling had we not had these meetings. And finally, we also practice both pair and mob coding throughout the project. We employed pair coding throughout, which was uh, really helpful, especially on front end for tackling what was basically an entirely new language, framework, and development platform. And for both front and back end, we initially mob coded both of them for the first few days, and this gave us but all a good good footing of the sort of foundation of both sides of the app. And now I'm going to pass you over to Judit, who's going to talk a little bit about the challenges that we faced working on this project. Not so much a challenge, but an important factor that during the two weeks we encountered some illnesses in the team and we were already down to a team of three people because unfortunately we had someone who had to drop out just before starting the project. The three of us also have never worked together before, although we were doing the same course, we just never ended up being paired up. So first we had to actually get to know each other a bit more and our strengths and weaknesses as well and overcome some communication challenges at times. To do that, we started off with learning together, which leads me to our next challenge of picking up a whole set of new technologies. We would start off alone, reading through a bunch of documentations and watching tutorials on our own. So then afterwards, we could then group up and do some mob coding um, of part of our application together before splitting off to focus on different areas. Working remotely, but together as a team was also a challenge, partly because we never actually had to do that um, before and partly because we had some technical challenges as well. Between the three of us, we had both Mac and Linux, which weren't always compatible or things just didn't work out as we expected them, like the mobile simulators just would not work on one of our machines. 
our solution to all of this was that we did a lot of video calls on Zoom to have a face-to-face -face contact that we would otherwise um, have had in person. Um, we also did a lot of calling on Discord and Slack. We were pretty much constantly available there to be able to listen to each other and help out when someone was struggling. We also did a number of daily stand-ups and we did a lot of pair coding with um, VS Code's live share extension, which lets all the connected parties type into the same code as we would have otherwise do, did that in person. We also kept a close eye on our Trello board, making sure that any bottleneck tasks were completed on time so that other parts of our application could also progress. We reviewed our deadlines, we kept a track of each other's work and jumped in if help was needed. The last challenge to mention was integrating Flutter with GraphQL. The library recommended to do this was only a year and a half old and recently just had a big update in January, which meant a lack of available resources as the ones that we found were all outdated. As a solution, all three of us jumped on the issue and did some extensive research, including looking into public GitHub repos, which had real life examples of using our plugin. And now at last, I will pass you to Katie, who will tell a bit more about the future outlook of Helping Hand. I'm now going to talk to you about the future outlook of Helping Hand. As you know, we all had only two weeks to deliver this project, so I think there's a lot more we would love to add in the future. Some of these are image to text, audio to text, and a web app for typing in a list as different ways of interacting with the app to make it more accessible. One of the main things we would look to add is an in-app payment solution. We're currently assuming cash could be left in an envelope on delivery. However, we are encouraging a safe exchange at a distance and an in-app payment solution would fully facilitate this and make it more secure. To add more security to the app in future, we would look to implement a rating system and perform security checks on volunteers. We'd like to say thanks to everyone for taking the time to support us, we really appreciate it and we have been really excited to share our app with you. Without further ado, we'd like to open up the Q&A session where we'll be answering your questions live in the chat below. Thanks for listening.